Oh, my internet don't screw up. All right, here yeah. we go. All right. I'm going to get to the intro. We are live. There he is. How you doing? Doing fine. How about yourself? This is, the, this is out of the box uh, podcast made possible by Parafarm Entertainment, Parafam. And uh, Bradley is missing in action tonight for those of you who are looking forward to seeing him. So mm-hmm. I got another guest on here, Jim McFarlane. Uh, He's pretty uh, privy as to what my experience was uh, when I was abducted. Bradley was going to interview me on that. So uh, I figured I'd have Jim on here instead of going solo. And if there's ever anybody, uh, any viewers that want to come on, you can let me know and uh, I can send you a link to join us. Chris is in the house. Hi, Chris. How are you? Happy to see you as well. How you doing, Jonathan Kip, Lisa Ao? All right. Uh, um, sorry to hear that, Chris. Chris Joan Marie says, uh, been a rough week. My good friend died. My condolences. Same here, Chris. <laughs> yeah, it's good to be here. Nice to see you there, Jonathan Kip. Anyway, I don't know uh, how many of you are familiar with my uh, my experience of abduction, but if there's any <clears throat> questions, I can start out by answering those. Well, hope we can lift your spirits there, Chris. And uh, Chris, this is for you from Jonathan Kip. My condolences. (laughs) 
so anyway, uh, I was abducted and, uh, you know, for this particular, uh, show, what I wanted to do was, uh, display my tattoo, see if there was any, uh, readers or psychics and, you know, out there that could tune into it and try to figure out anything about it. And, uh, but like I said, Bradley's not here. He's probably on a, another one of his hiatuses. <laughs> oh, Brad, they're my A, ain't he? Yeah. Yeah, he's in my A. He's missing an action. Maybe, so. maybe he got abducted. Yeah, maybe. Anything's possible. But uh, he, my experience uh, began when I was a child, really, but that's really foggy. I mean, I've always had that in the back of my mind since about eight years old. I'm sure you've all heard of the Bonnie and Betty Hill incident uh, abduction. And uh, I believe that's a true abduction and an authentic abduction and not a, uh, a fraud in any way because uh, at that time they were abducted uh, September 19th, 1961, which was coincidentally my eighth birthday. And I feel tied into that somehow, but what I mean to say is back, they were an interracial married couple. And back then in the early sixties, that was taboo. So I would think that the last thing they would want to do is bring any unnecessary or unwanted attention upon themselves with something so bizarre. So I believe that to be a true abduction case. Um, Lisa Ao says, uh, Jim, how would you, how would I find out information about alien activity when I was a child there in uh, Okeechobee, Florida? I tried the uh, Florida chapter of MUFON and got nothing. Um, I don't know, maybe you could consider uh, hypnotic aggression, which I've considered right along since my experience, but it would have to be somebody that I really trust because a hypnotist can actually, um, you know, manipulate what, what you think you're experiencing or what you experienced. So in order for me to go with hypnotic aggression, I'd have to really trust whoever the hypnotist is. Nathan Dennis says, LOL, hey, my cousin is on screen. Hi, Jim, Mike McFarlane. What's going on, Nathan? I guess I guess he's a cousin and also a fan. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Larry Hollenbeck's in the house. That's different. Hey, Hello, buddy. How you doing there, Larry? Now, this man, Larry, it's a coincidence that he's appearing, okay? Matter of fact, I haven't heard from him for a while. He's the... Uh, um, guy that I sent my uh, uh, pictures of my tattoo to, the alien tattoo, which is this tattoo, by the way. Oh. See if you can get him come on, Jim. And give some detail of what he did. Trying to get this in there. I think anyway, more uh, even. He's the Photoshop expert that examined that tattoo. Let me... Uh, Larry, would you like to come on the show and explain to the viewers uh, what you found with the tattoo? He says he's pretty good. Let's see if he'd like to come on. <laughs> Jonathan Kipp says that's wild. And Nathan Dennis says, uh, hey, Jim, Mike McFarlane got probed by aliens. Share about it, cuz. <laughs> Larry says, unprepared, but sure. <laughs> well, if you don't mind, Larry, I'll send you the link. I'll do that right now. And to answer your question, Nathan, I can't testify to something that I can't remember.
Yeah, that's a fair enough answer there, uh, Mr. McFarland. But uh, were there any side effects afterwards? <laughs> in, in, in the first place, I didn't claim to be abducted. They come to my house. I didn't have to go to them. They didn't have to come and get me. They'd come to the house. Well, Larry, uh, I sent you the link. So if you want to come on, uh, it's in the in your uh, personal uh, chat box, the uh, messenger. Lisa Ayo is asking, have others been tattooed before? I'm not I'm not really sure about that. I I'm the you know, I don't know. I know I have, but I've never heard of any other case. Nathan says he's kidding and he loves you. <laughs> <clears throat> Hopefully, Larry will come on because the focus of this uh, episode was going to be on the tattoo itself, anyway. But anyway, it began you. around eight, and then you move forward to the uh, fall of 2012. Uh, I distinctly remember it was a Wednesday night, and at the time, I was a Massachusetts constable and a uh, tour bus driver. Uh, motor coach bus driver. I used to do a commuter run between New Bedford and Boston. And I remember sitting in front of the computer that Wednesday night in 2012, the fall of 2012, I looked at the lower right hand corner of the computer monitor to know what note to what time it was with the thought that I had to get up early to drive the bus the next day. And all of a sudden I just went out, uh, then after a while, I'm coming to and I'm sitting still in front of the computer looking around the room. Um, and I glance over the alarm clock and it said 2.57 a.m. And I'm looking around trying to gather my thoughts, trying to get myself out of the like a stupor I was in. Then all of a sudden, I felt an intense burning sensation on my right forearm. And uh, this tattoo was on my forearm. Been there since. I don't know if anybody can get any vibes off it, but and, uh, I held it in for about a year and a half, two years, and then finally I said, well, I'm going to come out with yeah. my experience because I, I know what happened. I know there's a lot of people that don't believe it, and I can't blame them for that. No. If I was on the other side of the fence, I probably wouldn't believe it myself. And uh, when I did come out with it, uh, I did a... Uh, 30 minute uh, interview segment on the local cable TV channel up there in Massachusetts in my area. And coincidentally, the, the host of the show that interviewed me was an attorney for a law firm that I did serves for as a constable. So basically at that point in time, I was, I was putting my reputation on the line and, uh, you know, and from there, but it was like a therapy for me. I got a, a load lifted off my chest. I mean, it was good to let it out, basically. Nathan's asking you a question, Jim. What's up? Have you ever considered taking pictures of your tattoos each week and maybe putting a book together? Would be neat to see all the changes. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, Nathan, because as I mentioned before, it does slightly morph. And uh, the changes are subtle. I mean, it's not something that'll, you know, flash out at you, but they, they are subtle. Um, Larry will be able to explain more about what he discovered within the tattoo that you can't see with the naked eye. What he can explain better than I can is what process he used to be able to do that without, without altering the image of the tattoo itself. Yeah, I ain't no image expert, but I could even see it's morphed over time. Yeah, you've seen the subtle changes because you and I are in contact uh, quite often. But Nathan's also asking, has there been any side effects from the tattoo, like any health issues or better health? Well, to be honest with you, I had a heart attack in 2017. I had two stents put in in February of uh, 2017. 
And then uh, they gave me like three different blood thinners and aspirin, and I developed an internal bleed. But I overcame that. And for the last year and a half, you know, I still smoke like a nut. That's the only bad habit I have. I don't drink, but I smoke. And, uh, you know, last year and a half, I walked from one end of the house to the other, and I'd be gasping for air, always short of breath. But lately, for the last month, I don't know what it is. I, I'm, uh, I, I feel totally better. I can walk and go to Walmart, walk the whole store, no, no heavy breathing. Uh, and I'm feeling great. Uh, I don't know. I don't think it's got anything to do with the tattoo, but I will say a conventional tattoo heals up, you know, uh, within seven to 10 days, and it'll scab up like a scraper on an abrasion when it heals. This tattoo didn't scrape up a, scra a scab up at all. It was uh, more like a boil, and, it, and when it healed, it peeled like a blister. Uh, and uh, like a sunburn would peel, and it healed within three days. Have you seen Larry yet? No. I sent him the link, though. He says, I may be the blues. They are my friends with Native American Indians. Jonathan Kibb says it has some mystic trippy vibes. <laughs> it's definitely got energy. And I'm hoping Larry comes on. Plan on coming on, Larry. Yeah, how's it going, Vic Makarov? So uh, you, you can... Uh, Tell uh, the viewers some of the experiences you've had since you met me here uh, through Facebook about, what, three and a half, four years ago? Yeah, something like that. Well, to let everybody know, I've had cancer twice. Second time I had lung cancer, and I started coughing blood up, coughing my head off. Well, one night I'm in bed, and... Something bringing me awake in the middle of the night, but I'm paralyzed. I can't see, or I can see, I just can't talk or move. I mean, I can see and I can hear, that's it. And at the foot of my bed stands three alien greys, the short ones. And one steps out and the other two and starts around the bed with his hand out, like he's going to put his hand on me. And I'm freaking out. I can't get loose from whatever grip they got me in. The next thing I know, he puts his hand on me, and it was like God himself had put his hand on me. It's just hard to describe it. That's the only way I can describe it, like God put his hand on you. Just instant peace. Well, a little bit, I felt him take his hand off of me, and when I opened my eyes, and there's nobody there. And then tell them what happened the next day when you was going to call. <laughs> oh, yeah. Smart Alec there. I call him the next morning. I'm going to tell him what happened. And before I could tell him anything, he tells me what happened to me. He talks about <laughs> his buddies coming to pay me a visit. <laughs> yeah, well, I like to mention since the abduction, I, uh, I not only have the tattoo, but I'm able to energetically heal others. And uh, I do get telepathic downloads of information from them randomly. I can't do it at will, but it comes randomly. It's a shame we can't get Pepper on here to. Oh, yeah. Tell what you did for her. Yeah, because I've done healing sessions over the Internet successfully, uh, not only for Jim, but for his wife. And, uh, well, you know Peppa better than I do. I mean, I, I don't know her as good as you do. You can explain what happened there if you want, Jim. Well, Peppa, she's 80, 88 now. At the time, she was like 86. And for five years prior to when this happened, 
she'd been going to the wound clinic. She had sores on her leg the size of the quarters, and they wouldn't close up. And poor old woman was in pain all the time. Well, I finally convinced her because she was skeptic. I finally convinced her to do a session with Jim. Well, I sent her a shungite stone, a healing stone. I sent her one of them. Well, then Jim did a session for her. And before we started the session, we was on video chat, and she showed Jim the sores on her legs and what they look like. Well, he does this session. Well, the next morning, she gets in contact with me, and she comes on video with me and Jim, and she shows us her legs. They was completely healed. Completely. The skin was growed over and everything. Them holes had closed plumb up overnight. You don't need email, Larry. Uh, just click on the link that I put in the messenger box. I know Larry's saying he can't get back to the show now either. I don't know if it's his browser or what. Jim will always bother to ask him what you use abducted. Lisa's asked, uh, Lois, uh, Lois Bowers is asking, uh, what year were you abducted? It was the fall of 2012. I, I don't know the date exactly, but I, I distinctly remember for some reason that it was a Wednesday night. <laughs> Chris John Marie says uh, she finds a lot of uh, vampires are attracted to her. <laughs> well, I'd be attracted to if I was a vampire. <laughs> uh, Vic Makaroff is asking, uh, these beings uh, you see, are they transparent, Jim? The ones you've seen, they weren't transparent. They no, were solid. no, they were solid. Like I said, the one that put his hand out, I remember distinctly, he had three fingers and a thumb. He didn't have four fingers and a thumb like us. Bobby Stasbeski says, uh, I live in a big old house all alone. Crazy stuff happens here. Electrical stuff switching on and off. One year ago, I dislocated my shoulder in my sleep. I couldn't imagine something like that happening in your sleep. Yeah, well, that is strange, very strange. Chris, Chris John Marie says uh, it's hard to detect at first, but you can feel people draining you at times. Yeah, I guess there are energy suckers out there. Lois Bars is asking, was it just overnight? Are you talking about an ad the abduction or what Jim experienced with the aliens? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, I think she's talking. I think she's talking about your deal. I don't think she was in here. Well, when I you told time. Her. I lost time almost, I think, just under five hours from 9.15 p.m. to 2.57 a.m.
Lisa Ayo says, uh, I can feel and see things at different times. There are energy vampires out there. Yes, I believe that. Chris Joan Marie says, I get a lot around me. Well, if you're aching it to uh, vampires, Chris, uh, protect yourself with some garlic, raw garlic. <laughs> Put a string of raw garlic around your neck. Uh, Lois Bauer says, yes, the abduction, yeah, it was about just under five hours of lost time. The abduction itself, actually, whether I went on board the craft or whatever, I can't remember. And I'm concerned, considering hypnotic uh, regression at some point. But like I said before, it would have to be somebody that I trust. Chris Joan Marie says, I kind of know what people are thinking. I can predict a lot and see future and dreams. That's good. Well, that's good. That that gives you time to self-protect in a, in a way, I guess, Chris. Lois Bars is asking, uh, would you show your tattoo close to the camera? Yeah, I can do that right now. Chris says there are psychic vampires. Some people do not know they're doing it. That's right. A lot of people are unaware of it. Uh. Bobby's asking, uh, what did the tattoo first look like? It looked basically the way it does now, but like in the middle uh, here, when it when it was first put on, there was no nothing in here. It was like white, like this is right here. This was like all white in the middle, and all this just appeared afterwards and during the course of time. So, and there's subtle little changes. But uh, I was hoping Larry could get on here to explain the method he used to see and bring up symbols within the tattoo that can't be seen with the naked eye. Was there any Nordics amongst the beings when you were abducted? No, the, uh, but I, the, I'm connected to the uh, Zeta Reticula, which are the short grays. If you want, Jimmy, you tell them about your experience there that night that you were taken out of harm's way when you were driving tractor. Oh. Yeah. I was driving a truck. I was coming out of West Concert into northern Illinois. Coming down the interstate. I just crossed into Illinois. And I'd been on the phone with Jim and Larry there. And I told them I'm going to hang up. I got to call the wife before she goes to bed. Well, I get off the phone with them. And I call her. And I talk to her for a few minutes. And she says, well, I'm going to bed. So we hung up. Well, just a few minutes, I'm going down the road there, and all of a sudden, this 
bright flash of light. I mean, just intense bright light completely blinded me. I go hitting the brakes on this tractor trailer trying to stop because I can't see nothing. I can't see where I'm going. And when the light fades out and my vision comes back, I'm no longer on the interstate. I'm I'm out on a, on a two-lane road in the middle of nowhere. And I come up to this red light, and there's a, a little bit small town. I probably had a couple hundred people in this town, maybe a bad many. I had a little convenience store in the corner where they had a Cisco truck delivering up to the store. I park on the shoulder and I walk over and I ask that guy in a Cisco truck how to get back to the interstate. He looks at me and he says, are you in that truck? And I said, yeah. He said, well, my question to you is how the hell did you get over here? I said, I have no clue. And he looks at me like I'm crazy. And I told him, I said, I just need directions back to the interstate. So he told me how to go. Well, I start back or I turn around and start back to the interstate and it wound up being like 46 or 48 miles back to the interstate. Well, I called my wife back after I take off before I got back to the interstate. I called her back and I told her, I said, you know, I just hung up you. And I started telling her what happened. She said, no, you didn't just hang up with me. She had been three or four hours since you hung up. And I look at my, I look, I look at the clock and on my, well, not my watch. And sure enough, I'd lost, I don't know, two or three hours. I get on it. I call Jim and I tell him about it. And he said, well, when he told me, he said, they probably taking you out of harm's way or something. Well, I get home the next day and I get to looking on the internet. They had a bad tractor trailer wreck up the road there, just a little ways. And it, the driver and the people in the car, everybody in the, involved in the accident is a truck and a trailer, a truck and a car. Anyway, everybody died in the accident. And that's the only I can figure is somebody's keeping me out of harm's way or something. Bobby wants to know if you've been abducted more than once, Jim. We can't hear you, Jim. You're muted. Yeah, I do believe that uh, I was abducted twice. Uh, like I said, I feel there's a connection but without memory to the Bonnie and Betty Hill abduction. I feel I'm connected with that in some way since I was eight years old. But, um, you know, the second time I know something happened. And from what I experienced since I know it was an abduction. Now, that abduction, as far as, like I said, as far as being on board, you know, brought on board a craft or whatever, I have no recollection. But, like I said, I'm considering a hypnotic regression with the right hypnotist. <laughs> Louise Bowers says, uh, wow, they must like you, Jim. I said, I don't know about liking me, but. I'm sure there's a reason what that reason is. I have no idea, but maybe someday the answer will come. I don't know. Oh, yeah, maybe that's to you, Jim. We're both named Jim. Jonathan Kipp says, also, they must like you too, right? Oh, wait a minute. I'm on the wrong one here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jonathan Kipp says, uh, they must have been protecting you, Jim. Yeah, that's what I told him. He found that out when he Googled it the next day. Right, Jim? Uh, so any other experiences, Joe? Oh, tell them about the time you uh, met that guy there. Where was that? In a tobacco shop or something? 
Your mic is muted, Jim. Yeah, I was down in Kennett, Missouri. I walked in this tobacco shop. He was going to get me a pipe. And there was a guy at the counter over behind me talking to the guy running the store. And they was talking to alien stuff. And I was just standing there looking at the pipes, listening to him. And I heard him tell this guy, he said, yeah, he said, you know, for long, they're going to do a, a public, you know, come out to the world publicly. And he said, I even know where they're going to, what they're going to do their first public appearance. And I'm listening to him. And when he says Bach Towers, Florida, I about shit my pants because that's where Jim lives right there by Bach Towers, Florida. And that's the reason Jim moved to Florida. Yeah, I don't I why you moved Jim, to Florida. That's right. I had told Jim like two and a half years before that, that their first public appearance, uh, you know, uh, pertaining to full disclosure was going to be at Bach Towers in Florida. So that must have really flipped you out. That. Yeah. Were you, was, were you in Missouri when that guy told you that? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know him. Now, Chris, Joe Marie's asking, did you feel any surge of energy or in energy? Uh, I don't know if she's referring to you, Jim, when you were on the highway there and you seen that flash of light. I'm not really any energy, just that flash of light. I mean, I didn't really feel anything. I didn't feel no different. It was disoriented because I didn't figure out how in the hell I got on that two-lane road. Yeah, that's the main reason why I relocated to Florida. Not not only because the weather's nice and I won't miss them brutal winters up north, you know, in Massachusetts, but um, I told Jim that, you know, I'm about maybe seven miles from Bark Towers right now. Oh, Larry's back listening to the show, he said. <laughs> Larry, can you just write a couple of sentences explaining the procedure you used to analyze the tattoo without, you know, altering the image itself? And I'll post it up here on the uh, video. Again, Larry is the Photoshop expert that I had check out the tattoo on numerous occasions. And he could also attest to the fact that it does morph. <clears throat> Bobby's asking, uh, why haven't you done any regression therapy with a qualified clinical psychologist? And the answer to that is, uh, it's going to be somebody I really trust. I'm taking my time. Uh, I mean, we all know hypnotists can make people go on stage and act like fools with the power of suggestion. So before I put myself in that position and allow myself to go on, I want to make sure it's somebody that I can trust. But I will get it done. Hopefully, Larry can type a quick explanation as to what type of procedure you used to analyze a tattoo. Jim, can you see who all is viewing? Uh, I can see only who comes through on a st uh, st uh, stream yard chat. Oh, okay. I just want to pick color to mine with that empty space between the viewers is still in here. 
Jonathan Kipp says, uh, yeah, Jimmy, it's, uh, it, took me, it took him several years to find a good counselor with EMDR. EMDR. It helps the process when the patient believes in their abilities. <laughs> Nathan says, hey, I heard you. Larry Hollenbeck says, I basically enhanced the lighting and contrast to bring out what was there without adding any artifacts. And while Larry's on here, he can attest to the fact that uh, what was brought out of the tattoo that you could see uh, deep within the layers of the tattoo that you can't see with the naked eye was different symbols. One was of an astronaut, and there's other little symbols in there that represent uh, alien images. Well, we have somebody in the house with a unique, uh, unique, unique name, Drunk. Which one of you fellows get abducted? Maybe we should answer that question when he sobers up. <laughs> I'm the abductee. Since uh, this other gentleman on the show here met me, he's had uh, experiences, but no abductions that I'm aware of. No, if I was abducted, it had to happen when I was small. Well, you know, lots of times there's no recollection either, you know. Yeah. No clear recollection anymore. And I've also done right. healing sessions with, with you too, Jim, right? And your wife. Yep. Drunk's got another question for you. Drunk's asking, what type of aliens got you? The grays or another type? It was the Zeta Reticuli, the uh, shot grays. And Nathan, he's talking about when he saw a UFO when he was a kid. Yeah, Nathan says, I saw a UFO when I was 16, clear as day, took off like lightning fast and went in a zigzag pattern before taking off. Chris Joan Marie says uh, she wakes up between three and five every night with a tickling feeling. Well, I guess that must break up your sleep. Are you able to go back to sleep after that happens, Chris? She's asking me how I know. Well, I just put it up on there. You just... That's what I just read, Chris. As you wake up between three and five every night with a tickling feeling. Drunk, drunk is asking, uh, did you feel that the aliens were male and female, or did they all, all or did all the energy feel the same? To be honest with you, I can't answer that question. I never gave it any thought. I never had any difference in uh, any energy feels. In any way, I know the uh, I don't remember the actual abduction itself as far as being taken aboard a craft and that, as I said, I was left with a tattoo. Um, I do have connection with them telepathically 
through uh, informational downloads at random times. It's not something I can do at will. Uh, since my abduction, uh, my views on life, nature, and the universe itself have completely changed. Technically, you know, what I, from what I've learned, life is a journey to be experienced and not a problem to be solved. Okay, Larry Hollenbeck is saying, uh, over time in keeping in touch with Jim, we have seen the tat change in color in different aspects becoming clearer. Yeah, thank you for verifying that, Larry. Lois is telling you better. I guess her ex-husband seeing a UFO too, Jim. Lois Bowers, yeah. Uh, my my late husband uh, told me he saw a UFO one morning as he was walking out of a convenience store. So no chance of it being a dream. Well, I agree with that. He had to be awake when he observed that. Drunk says, I agree that life is a journey to be experienced. Yeah, that's what it's all about. The experience. And how we carry ourselves here in this journey determines, you know, what our journey will be like in the next life, reincarnation. That's karma. What goes around comes around. Yes, I've heard of Bob Lazar. Yep. Yeah. And uh, the government's trying to say they never he never worked for them when he did. I know. I know the whole uh, Bob Lazar story. Oh yeah, they're full of. I believe. I believe Bob Lazar. Yep. Yeah. I believe Bob Lazar before I believe the government. Awful funny. They say he never worked at Los Alamos, but he's listed on the on the phone book registry there at certain years. Well, it's just like Phil Snyder. I don't know if any of this will hear Phil out there, but Google. That's an interesting story. What was said about old Phil, Jim, he, he, he knew that they were going to take him out. A drunk saying, uh, so if Bob Lazar is right, the aliens have been here thousands of years, which I agree with. They have been. Larry Hollenbeck says, Larry Hollenbeck says uh, being good to each other is the key. Well, love yeah. is the key. If we, if we could do that collectively as a species, it'd be a much better world to live in. But what man's got to overcome is his ego. Yeah, and I'll tell you something else. Drunk was talking about they've been here for a long time. Well, I got news for everybody. People need to wake up. They've been here longer than we have. Your mic's, your mic's not working, Jim. No, well, still dead. There it is. Uh, Drawing says this might sound crazy, but I think aliens are just the maintenance men of the galaxy. And what they maintenance is us. Well, it's a possibility. I mean, they're, they're like maybe guardian angels or guides, you know. And I also believe there's, you know, uh, good intentions and bad intentions with different alien species, which I also believe there are many of. So it's like that with anything, you know. We're living in a in a realm where you have a positive and a negative. So technically, we're living in a, a random, chaotic, unforgiving realm. And, you know, this chaos, you know, amongst nature naturally with, um, you know, tornadoes, earthquakes, volcano eruptions, tsunamis. But do you think the universe really cares if 250,000 people 
perish in a tsunami. Do you think it feels guilty? No. Uh, my belief is, uh, from what I've learned from the extraterrestrials, the extent of God is a universal energy, an essence, a source that makes all things possible. So the extent of a God is the energy that moves us, your consciousness. That's a key word right there. The air, the air that we breathe. So your consciousness, you know, whether you want to be on the dark side or the light side, as far as good and evil are concerned, will determine what your next life is going to be like. Whether, whether you have a, a better better journey than you have now, if you've learned something while you were here, or if karma is going to bite you in the ass. That's how that all works. So where there's natural chaos amongst nature itself, man is a part of nature just like everything else around him. So therefore, there will always be chaos amongst men in this realm. So if you do the journey right and you learn a lesson while you're here, in your next existence, you'll move up a dimension or a level instead of coming back and having to do it all over again until you do learn. Thank you, Chris Joan. She mm -hmm. said one hundred percent true. Wow, been on for fifty two minutes already. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> We'll close it down at the hour, I guess, top of the hour. Anybody have any more questions? Chris, Joan Maria is asking, do uh, you know any of your past lot? Uh, I do. Uh, I was a Tibetan monk at one time. Uh, I experienced this realm as a dog. Um, and I, I did do a, a lifetime where I usually come back as a male, but one time I came back as a female. And what I did was during that, that experience, that lifetime, I was a midwife along with another woman that worked as a midwife. We did that all our lives and, uh, we worked together till a ripe old age. And in this lifetime, that woman that I worked with as a midwife was my mother, believe it or not. And the last time uh, I was here was like mid, early, mid, uh, early to mid 1800s. I was a, a banker with a big handlebar mustache and I built a lot of people out of a lot of cash. And I guess that's why I'm struggling in this life <laughs> financially. <laughs> Larry Hollenbeck says using our consciousness collectively will change the world we live in. And that's true. But uh, that's the problem trying to get uh, everyone uh, collectively together is, is the hard part. Probably a good thing Larry didn't come on because I'd have to tell, I'd have to have him tell his past life. Who's that? Larry, if he's on here, I had to. <laughs> no, we don't. No, we don't want to do that. <laughs> I will ask Larry though. <laughs> do you have any recollection of any la la of your uh, past lives? <clears throat> Chris Joe Marie says, I can feel mine, just their mindset or occupation. Are you referring to previous lives, Chris?
Chris, when you wake up in the morning, well, like you said, early morning uh, with that tickling, are you able to fall back to sleep or do you have, you have a hard time going back to sleep? Larry, Larry says no, no past lives that he can remember. <laughs> uh, we got a few more minutes. Any more questions before we close the show? Yeah, that's what I figured, Chris. You know, you're waking up like that early in the morning, especially if it happens repetitively. It's probably hard for you to go back to sleep. Oh, the lion's pride. How you doing? Waving right back at you. Chris Joan Marie says the tickling uh, sensation is all over her body. That's unusual. I never heard of that. Chris, any idea of what it what it means or why it's happening? Chris says, I pray for it to stop and then ask where it's going to tickle me and it touches me in the spot I ask. <laughs> I'm not going to pursue that any further. <laughs> wow. Larry's asking, uh, does your tat have any new aspects? Yeah, it changes subtly, Larry. It's hard to explain. I mean, you know, like the bottom of it where the trees are and stuff. I'll send you another picture. I don't know uh, your situation right now. I don't think you're using Photoshop too much now, are you? Yeah, I'd have to agree with you, Chris. She says a poltergeist or spirit. Not sure. What I was fixing to say when she said you asked you to tickle her in a certain spot, I was it only does. Kidding, Chris. <laughs> All right, it's just about the top of the hour. So I want to thank everybody for chiming in. Um, I guess Rambo wants to get in the picture here. All right, Jim, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. No problem. Call me after Riley's a while. Gonna, Riley's going to have to explain to me what happened. <laughs> All right, thanks for, thanks for coming on, Jim. I appreciate it. No problem. See you next Talk time, everybody. Later. All right. Bye.